What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. So I know a lot of you guys are stuck at home with everything going on in the world and you may not be able to make it out to the lake. And today we're actually behind my apartment and I'm going to show you how I practice my casting when I can't get to the lake to improve my fishing so that when I get back out there, I can put a lot more fish in the boat. So let's get into it. So the first thing you need to do before you start casting is give yourself a little bit of elevation off the ground. If you think about when you're fishing out of a boat, you're actually elevated about maybe a foot off the surface of the water. And so if you try to do your casting practice while you're standing on the ground, a lot of times you might actually hit the ground with your cast or it'll just make it really difficult to present your bait. And so instead, you need to give yourself a little bit of elevation, which in this case is this old crate I'm using. And you can use anything from like a, like a lounging chair or a crate or some cinder blocks or whatever it is, but just something that gives you about a foot, foot and a half elevation off the ground so you can make a free range of motion with your cast. So the next thing you need to do is actually place on some targets you're gonna cast at. Whether that's an old skateboard or an old table that you can try to cast under, or maybe a tennis racket you can cast on top of, or some traffic cones and jugs of oil. Basically just targets you can try to present your bait to. And your goal when you're practicing is to put your bait as close to these objects as possible, if not right on them, and also try to present these baits quietly as if you were going to present them into the water. So let's get into that. So now that you have your targets laid down and a box or something to stand on, you next need to start casting at the targets. And you wanna make sure you're doing this with the proper technique. And if you're not sure how to do the proper underhand roll cast technique or the pitching or flipping technique, check out these videos on my channel. They're complete tutorials of how to do all these techniques properly. And so start drilling yourself on the fundamentals of these casts before you start practicing hitting these targets so you don't develop any bad habits. And one thing I haven't mentioned yet is the equipment I'm gonna use when I'm practicing my casting. And I'm actually gonna start with anything from like a 610 to a seven foot medium heavy action bait casting rod and a 3 8 ounce jig. Jig is a great bait just to practice casting with and I'll put some sort of trailer on the back to give it a little bit extra weight. And then I'll just put any bait casting reel I have with like 15 to 17 pound test. It can be monofilament, fluorocarbon, whatever. And I'm gonna set the tension of the spool to kind of an average setting, something I'm very comfortable with. You don't want to try to start casting with your tension being too loose so that you are risking backlashes or too tight so that you can't get the baits to target. And we're actually going to adjust this as we go out through our practice, which we'll get into in a minute. Okay, let's give this a shot. I'm gonna start with the orange traffic cone. And that one was way too strong, way too high, which is normal, so I'm gonna start back over. That's a lot better, nice quiet right in front of that cone. Next one is that jug of oil. That one was a little bit too strong of a splash. You really want that bait to just barely be presented in there. I got the skateboard pretty well and then I'm going to put it right on top of that tennis racket which is perfect. So that wasn't too bad at all. So I hit all four of these objects with that 3 8 ounce jig. And so now that I feel pretty comfortable that I can go around in a circle hitting these targets with this weight jig, I actually want to change up the jig weight. And I'm actually going to go down to a quarter ounce because on the water you're going to be switching up the weights of your baits and the sizes of your baits all the time. And a lot of times just changing the way that bait will change how you need to present that bait and you need to be able to adapt on the fly with your mechanics so that when you make those casts you can consistently hit your target regardless of what weight jig you're throwing. Okay so now I have the quarter ounce jig on. Let's try to hit those same targets like I was with the 3 8 ounce jig. We'll start with that traffic cone there. Okay that one was a little bit too far. Let's try to hit the jug of oil. Okay that was sailing really high and one thing I've noticed already is that this bait has a tendency to go a lot higher and I can't keep it low to the ground. And that's because I haven't adjusted the spool tension on my reel. That's one thing you're going to have to do when you go from a heavier bait to a lighter bait whenever you're trying to ha cast really precisely at a target. And so to do that, you're just going to take your tension knob and loosen it up a little bit. And you may even go over to your braking system and adjust that up or down. And really my rule of thumb is that I want that bait when I press the button or engage the spool to be falling at a decent clip, let's say a foot every second. And that's good for me personally. But if you're not that great at casting yet, you may need to have this bait falling a little bit slower and you can just kind of adjust that spool until that bait is barely falling when you let go of the button. And when you do that, that will allow you to keep that bait lower to the ground and hit your target a lot easier. And so right there, hit the target first cast right away. That was a really good one on the jug of oil skateboard that one went way too high so i might still need to adjust it a little bit more and then we'll try this tennis racket nope still too high and so with this quarter ounce jig 
while that I took the drag down a little bit to that tension down a little bit, I still need to take it down a little bit more even to get that bait to land perfectly on target. The problem with that though is that if you don't have very good thumb control, you're in for a lot of backlashes. And so one thing you're actually training when you're doing this practice is not only your accuracy to hit the targets, but it's also your thumb control as you change from the different size baits and the different spool tensions or how tight your reel is. And so while you're doing this, constantly change the weight of your jigs so that you have to change that spool tension and train that thumb control. If you don't have good thumb control, you're never going to be a very good caster. And if you can't adjust the different weight baits, you're also gonna be really inconsistent. Okay, so I just hit all four targets with this quarter ounce jig and I'm feeling pretty comfortable with this jig and adjusting the tension of my spool to allow me to accurately present this weight bait. So next thing I would do is upsize to a half ounce jig and do the exact same process, try to hit all four targets. And then once I got pretty comfortable with every single weight jig that I could possibly throw, next thing I'm gonna do is actually adjust the rod setup that I'm using. So I'm actually gonna go from my 610 to seven foot rod to a 7.4 or a 7.6 rod, and I'm going to repeat this process with that longer rod. Okay, so I have my half ounce jig on now, and I switch from a 6.10 rod to a 7 foot 4 heavy action rod. And I'm going to try to repeat that same process. I have the same line size, just 15 pound fluorocarbon. I'm going to try to hit these targets, and <laughs> immediately you can see that it's very different, and I just got a backlash, and you will get lots of backlashes. So don't worry if you're getting backlashes, if you have to pick them out like this, this is part of the process. And here's actually the culprit of my recent backlash. There's all these sticks on the ground. They're everywhere. Make sure you clear out all these sticks. They will give you backlashes if you hit them. There's no sticks on the surface of the water when you're on the lake. So just make sure you clear all that out. It'll make your life a lot easier. Okay, so I've regrouped here and I'm gonna start casting these targets. So as far as the cone goes, that one went okay. Let's try to hit that back. Oil can, that's actually a lot easier to hit the faraway targets, but it seems like it's a little bit harder with this longer rod to hit the close targets, and that's kind of what I would expect. The longer your rod is, the harder it is to cast accurately at a short distance with that roll cast. And so a lot of times what I'll do instead when I'm practicing with a longer rod, especially if my targets are only, let's say, 20, 30 feet away, is to pitch to my targets. And that was a really bad pitch, so it looks like I need to practice my pitching. But pitching a bait is gonna be another valuable skill that's going to help you become a better fisherman because when you have a heavier bait and a longer rod and you're trying to fish kind of close quarters, sometimes you can be more accurate with a pitch than with a roll cast. And so you wanna know how to do both techniques efficiently and how to properly present that bait quietly with both your pitch and your cast. And I just did one round around these objects and I'm already pitching a lot better. This is more what I would expect from myself, which is good. And so, going to just keep pitching at these targets. That one's a little bit short and looks like I need to practice my casting as well. So this is actually a good time for me to get out here and do a run around these circles. And this is going to make me a lot better fisherman this spring if I keep this up. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty comfortable now with casting the different weight jigs and using the different length rods. And I'm making the right adjustments with my spool tension to hit the targets pretty consistently. And I'm able to get four targets in a row probably about half the time, which is pretty good. But that's not going to cut it when you're out in the water and there's the pressure of trying to make every cast count, whether you're on the lake just for fun or in a tournament. And so the way I used to practice to improve my casting a lot is actually put some pressure on myself when I'm practicing my casting. So to put some pressure on myself, what I would do when I was 11 years old is imagine that was in a tournament situation. And I would pretend that I was Kevin Van Dam, let's say, fishing the 2003 Bassmaster Classic on Louisiana Delta. And he was catching them flipping in that event. And so I was thinking, man, if I could hit every single one of these targets, let's say first cast, then I would catch a fish. And so what I would do is say, if I hit the target accurately, I catch a fish. If I miss the target, I don't catch a fish. And I would give myself seven chances to hit targets. And you need to catch five fish in a tournament to get a limit, so that means I have to hit five of seven targets accurately, or I'm not coming in with a limit, and I'm losing the Bassmaster Classic. And so, first up, I would practice my pitching, and I would go around every single target, and I would go seven different times, seven different targets, and I might kind of mix them up, not just go in a complete circle. And I say, if I miss that target, like that, nope, didn't hit it, that's one fish lost. That time I hit the target pretty well, so that's a fish. Now I am one for one. I hit that engine oil over there, that's two for one. I'm getting focused, guys, I'm not talking as much. There we go, that's three for one. So I have three fish in the boat. Let's make sure I hit this first target again. There we go, four for one. One more 
cast to get a limit. Oh, I missed it, dang it. Okay, missed that one. I got, okay, so now I'm, I'm four for two. If I miss this cast, I'm not gonna bring in a limit and I'm gonna lose Bassmaster Classic. This is what I would tell myself when I was younger. I gotta hit that milk or that oil carton. Boom, right there. Got my limit, just won the Classic. You're welcome, KVD. And other things I would do too is I would adjust the equipment I'm doing. So maybe I'd make my first cast with that 7.4. I hit the target there and actually come over here. I pick up a different rod. Now it's okay, well, let me go to that quarter ounce jig and try next cast with that and maybe give myself a little bit of a break. Okay, next target. I have to now readjust to a different length rod, different spool tension, and maybe now I have to do a roll cast and I have to hit that jug of oil. Okay, that was miserable. So I did not hit that. So like, okay, well now I have to go back over to the 7.4 rod. And I'm gonna keep switching, because this is what you might face when you're on the water. You have to keep changing the equipment and the gear you're using. Now I gotta hit the roll cast, hit the skateboard, I hit it there. And you keep switching back and forth, you guys get the idea. But by changing the rods you're using, by changing the presentation angles and stuff like that, you're going to really challenge yourself to become a more accurate caster and hit your targets every time. And by constantly changing the variables from the weight of the bait and the rod length, you're going to make yourself a lot better caster in really short order as long as you stick to it. So that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully you found it helpful and it gives you something to do while you're stuck at home and you can't go fishing. And if you practice these drills for even 30 minutes a day for maybe two or three weeks, it will make you better caster and it will put a lot more fish in the boat because you're going to present your bait better in a lot of different situations and be able to put your bait in places that other guys can't. So again, hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next one.